Good day, everyone. How many of you know this situation? You've worked hard on a submission to the Swiss Federal Court, and when you are about to dispatch it, you have that feeling of, yes, this time is a clear win. But then, when you receive the notification from the court, you have to swallow hard and think, how can I best explain this to my client? How many of you? Well, and how many of you would like to get a list with the seven golden rules to win your cases before the Swiss Federal Court? Great. This is what I will share with you over the next, next hour. But first, I would like to thank you for taking the time, making the investment to be here, to, to stay for this last uh, presentation here in Madrid on a Saturday, on this beautiful day outside. Four things first. At the end of my presentation, I will show you a QR code that leads you to my written notes with all the relevant rele uh, references to the jurisprudence of the Swiss Federal Court to the articles, so no need to take notes. Also, you will find some more additional information there, and with that, you will receive the most recent information that exists on the Swiss Federal Court's jurisprudence on football, so that you are top prepared when you next time ha have to draft a submission to the highest sport court. It will be exciting, and I will share several secrets from my office with you. I know the jurisprudence of the Swiss Federal Court requires a bit of concentration, more on the second day of conference, but I will take you by the hand, go with you step by step through the most important cases, like the previous speakers in our football family have so brilliantly done before me. Personally, I love to litigate before the Swiss Federal Court. Let me tell you the story of my first time before the court. In June 1996, Anne-Marie N. Anne came to my law firm where I was working as a trainee. Anne-Marie went to the private clinic of Dr. A, who was the chief physician at the regional hospital for a knee injury. Dr. A operated Anne-Marie on her highly swollen knee, resulting in an even greater injury to the knee than she had had before consulting him. My law, firm, my law firm sued the doctor at the district court and demanded compensation for Anne-Marie of approximately 170,000 Swiss francs. We litigated up to the Swiss federal court because the doctor, among other things, had alleged that we had taken the matter to the wrong court, as it was of public nature, and therefore to be judged under cantonal public law. So it was my task to present to the Swiss Federal Court the legal arguments in the sense that the doctor could not hide behind the state liability of the hospital, but was personally liable for the damage inflicted on Anne-Marie's knee. The federal court followed my reasoning, so I really enjoyed my experience before the court. Now, as said before, I will share with you the seven golden, goals, golden rules to win before the federal court. I have put together this list based on, a court, on the court's jurisprudence of over the last two years, and I must tell you, that while I studied the jurisprudence, in every decision I came across one name. In every decision I noticed it. So I became curious. I wanted to know more about it. I investigated it. And my research always ended with a kiss. Yes, I'm sure you know what I mean. I always came across Christina Kiss name. I have no doubt that you are all familiar with that name because it drops up, pops up in every decision we receive from the Swiss Federal Court related to football. 
This, the reason is that Mrs. Kiss is the president of the first civil law division of the Swiss Federal Court. She, therefore, has the final say in all our sports arbitration matters. So I think it's important to show you the face to the name and to present her to you. This is Federal Judge Kiss. Beside her cute name, Christina Kiss has an impressive career as a judge. She was in charge of the total revision of the Federal Administration of Justice, sat as, as an expert in the introduction of the independent court arbitration uh, administration in the canton of Solothurn, was a judge at several administrative and civil law co courts in various cantons of Switzerland, until she was elected federal judge on the 1st October 2003. So Mrs. Kiss is the Cristiano Ronaldo or the Kylian Mbappe among the Swiss federal judges regarding sports law. And I therefore decided to dedicate my list of the seven golden rules to her and therefore I will call it the Kiss List with all my respect. So let's immediately start with golden rule number one of the KISS list. As Michele and Joseph already mentioned, it's very important that you watch out that you have a legitimate, in, a legitimate interest when you litigate, lit, litigate before the Swiss Federal Court. I will explain this point with the case concerning the Peruvian player Paolo Guerrero. Most of you will know this case because it has much been discussed in the media and commented by colleagues in the re relevant law journals. Paolo tested positive for benzolecognine, a metabolite of cocaine, following a doping control in Russia in a, in a 2018 qualifying match for Russia. Paolo Guerrero was initially sanctioned with a one-year ban by FIFA. However, the FIFA Appeals Committee later reduced it to six months. The player and VADA filed appeals against the sanction, which the player sought to have reduced so he could compete in the FIFA World Cup, and VADA sought to increase. CAS increased the player's suspension to 14 months, finding that although it agreed with FIFA's judiciary's body that this, his positive test was caused by ingestion of tea containing the prohibited substance, Paolo was responsible for some degree of, or fault, of fault or negligence. This decision signified for the player that he could not crown his career with a participation in the FIFA World Cup and this is why the player and FIFA appealed the decision before the Swiss Federal Court. Within the complaint, the player's lawyer requested from the Swiss Federal Court the stay of proceedings, which would allow him to participate in the 2018 FIFA World Cup. This was the player's last hope. And Federal Judge Kiss granted the temporary suspension of the doping sanction. So personally, I find that this means his attorney completed the mission because even though the Swiss Federal Court later rejected the appeal in March this year, the lawyer managed to reach the goal that was expected from him. That means that Paolo could represent his team in Russia and thus made his dream come true and 32 millions of Peruvians happy. Well done. Now, the part of this case from which we can learn how to proceed before the Swiss Federal Court, it can be found in the complaint that FIFA lodged before the court. Federal Judge Kiss analyzed if FIFA was formally entitled to lodge a complaint before the Swiss Federal Court. One can think, obviously, yes, having FIFA been involved in the proceedings before CAS, but not necessarily. There are other requirements that must be met. 
These requirements are established in Article 76 of the, of the law of the Swiss Federal Court called PGG in German. They must be met cumulatively and the party bears the burden to prove that it fulfilled the, right, the requirements, which are, first one, wer vor der Vorinstanz am Verfahren teilgenommen hat oder keine Möglichkeit zur Teilnahme erhalten hat. Meaning that a party can lodge a complaint before the Swiss Federal Court if it took part in the proceedings before the previous judiciary instance or was deprived of the possibility of doing so. And as I said before, FIFA took part in the proceedings before CAS and therefore met the first requirement. Second one, wer durch den angefochtenen Entscheid besonders berührt ist und ein schutzwürdiges Interesse an dessen Aufhebung oder Änderung hat, which can be translated into who is particularly affected by the contested decision and has a legitimate interest in its cancellation or amendment. The second requirement is a bit more complicated. What does it mean to, to be particularly affected by the contested decision and to have a legitimate interest in its cancellation or amendment? Federal Judge Keyes emphasized, the interest for the cancellation or amendment of the decision must be of useful, current, and personal nature. So three elements must be met for a complaint before the Swiss Federal Court. The first element, what does useful mean? The interest must be worthy of protection, which means it must consist in the practical utility that the admission of the action would bring to its originator by avoiding any prejudice of an economic, ideal, material, or other nature that the decision undertaken would cause that originator. In the present case, FIFA did not demonstrate how the fact that Paolo Guerrero was punished more than it considered justified would cause any prejudice of any kind to the organization. Mrs. Kiss could therefore not verify in what way FIFA's interest was useful in cancelling or amending the decision. The second element of the three, to, to have a legitimate interest before the Swiss Federal Court, is what, that the interest must be of current nature. This is easy. If the desired benefit can no longer be achieved, the procedure must be written off as devoid of purpose. Or with other words, the interest worthy of protection must exist not only when the complaint is made, but also when the dis decision is issued. And if the interest disappears during the proceedings, the complaint becomes moot. The third element, the second one was not uh, of an issue in the Guerrero case, but the third element, what does the interest, what does it mean the interest must be of a personal nature? It is necessary to impair one's own interest before the Swiss Federal Court. A, a complaint before the Swiss Federal, Federal Court is excluded in order to safeguard the interests of others. However, there is an exception. For example, an association is not only entitled to lodge a complaint in order to safeguard its own interests, it may also lodge a complaint in order to safeguard the interests of its members, provided that they correspond to those of the majority of, it, of or at least a large number of its members and are to be safeguarded by, by it in accordance with its statutes. In the present case, however, Federal Judge Keyes concluded that from FIFA's comments in the related case to the request of provisional measures, it appeared that FIFA intended to support the player rather than represent its own interests, which corresponded to the not allowed pleading for others, and that FIFA had not substantiated the application of the aforementioned exception to the rule. 
FIFA therefore did not fulfill two of the three elements of having a legitimate interest. Uh, to be the second formal requirement bef to be admitted before the Swiss federal court and that is why federal judge Keys declared the complaint as inadmissible. Next important rule of the top seven list, grievances. One of the most common mistakes sports lawyers make that I found in my analysis is the fact that sports lawyers consider the Swiss Federal Tribun Tribunal a supreme instance for sports matters in the sense that the Swiss Federal Court has full power to review the facts and the law. And therefore, they raise grounds before the Swiss Federal Court that are clearly not admissible. I will explain this important point using the decision of the Swiss Federal Court of 7 May of this year concerning the case of the former Secretary General of FIFA. This is a case of legally fundamental importance. That is why this case was not judged by a panel of three judges, as it is the general rule, but in a panel of five judges, all of them female, by the way, which I find very a very pleasant change. As you probably all know, Mr. Walke was accused of several breaches of the FIFA Code of Ethics, ticket resale deals, travels without legitimate reason, conclusion of service agreement for his son, attempt to destroy data, the list is long. FIFA suspended and terminated the employment contract with him with immediate effect. The independent, the independent ethics committee concluded that Mr. Walke had violated several articles of the ethics code, prohibited him from engaging in any activity related to football for a period of 12 years and imposed a 100,000 Swiss francs fine. The FIFA appeal committee confirmed the breaches but reduced the duration of the prohibition imposed on him from 12 to 10 years. Mr. Walke appealed that decision before CAS. CAS rejected the appeal and the ex-secretary general took the case further to Mrs. Kiss, I mean to the Swiss Federal Court, requesting the annulment of the CAS award. In his complaint, Mr. Walke mainly gave reasons for his grievances under Article 393 of the Swiss Code of Civil Procedure, articles that apply to domestic arbitration. Let's analyze if he did right. Where do we find the grievances possible to invoke before the Swiss Federal Court? Article 77 of the law of the Swiss Federal Court helps us to answer this question. According to this article, the admissible grievances for complaints against arbitral awards are for international arbitration established in Article 190 for and following of the Swiss Federal Private International Law and for domestic in, uh, arbitration in Articles 300 and 89 of the Swiss Code of Civil Procedure. The question of in the domestic or international character of the arbitration is of great importance as the grounds for admissible complaints against awards made in the context of international arbitration are considerably more limited than those admissible against a domestic arbitration award. In particular, because arbitrariness as a ground against an international arbitral award is not allowed. In the case at hand, CAS and the parties all agreed that the present matter would actually be of a domestic nature. It was a clear Swiss employment relationship. The tribunal has its seat in Switzerland but they disagreed on the question whether they had validly opted out the application of the provisions that apply for domestic arbitration 
by means of the order of procedure that CAS had presented them and which they signed without reservation. This order of procedure document that you're all familiar with contained the following wording. In accordance with the terms of the present order of procedure, the parties agreed to refer the dispute to CAS, subject to the code of related arbitration. Furthermore, the provisions of chapter 12 of the Swiss private international law shall apply to the exclusion of any other procedural law. The ex-Secretary General of FIFA considered that he was not bound by this clause because he expressly requested the application of the provisions of the Swiss Code of Civil Procedure in his appeal brief, which are, as said before, the provisions for the domestic arbitration and which, to which the respondent did not object. Mr. Walke claimed that the procedural orders that uh, were, th these were apparently standard documents and almost mechanically distributed by CAS in all proceedings, and therefore this order of procedures would, would uh, be contrary to the principle of good faith. Additionally, he questioned that the parties could validly opt out the application for the provisions of the domestic arbitration. Federal Kiss and her colleagues confirmed that Mr. Walke was assisted by a lawyer and that he could not sign a procedural order containing a choice of law clause and subsequently argue that he was not bound by it. Otherwise, the principle of con contractual fidelity, Pacta Sunt Servande, would be violated. Regarding the legality of the choice of law, Federal Judge Keyes examined if the clause contained in the order of procedure satisfies the condition of validity of an opting out. In this respect, Federal Judge Keyes referred to Article 353, Paragraph 2 of the Swiss Code of Civil Procedure, according to which an opting out is valid if the third part of the Swiss Code of Civil Procedure regarding domestic arbitration is expressly excluded, and two, the chapter 12 of the Federal Private International Law on International Arbitration is agreed, and three, the express declaration of the parties is in written form. However, in this case, the parties had not explicitly mentioned in the clause of the order of procedure the exclusion of the third part of the Swiss Code of Civil Procedure. They had only mentioned to the exclusion of any other procedural law. Ms. Kiss and her colleagues, however, explained that this wording is sufficient because of Switzerland's dual arbitration system. Either the provisions for the international or the provisions for the domestic are applicable. So there is no room for doubt that if one mentions one system while excluding the other, the second one is excluded. Consequently, Mr. Walke's argument had to be rejected and only the grievances that apply with the international arbitration were admissible in the case at hand, but since he did not raise any grievances that in this respect that could be heard by the deciding body, therefore Mr. Walker's complaint was rejected. What are the golden rules that we can gain from this decision? First, very important, the Swiss Federal Court is not a Supreme Court sports law court. The grievances are very limited. If your case goes to CAS and you do not agree with the contents of the CAS procedural order, do not sign it. And if you have signed and accepted the international arbitration provisions, or if your case falls under the international arbitration provisions, do not raise complaints in your, do not raise grievances in your complaint that are only admitted in domestic arbitration, in particular not arbitrariness. 
let's look at the mistakes that sports lawyers make when within the admitted grievances of the international arbitration and start with the next golden rule to avoid mistakes. Do not claim that the sole arbitrator was designated irregularly or that the arbitration body was constituted irregularly if you cannot deliver the evidence. In this respect, I would like to touch about, upon the case of the Belgium football club RFC Serain. We already heard about that case this morning, and uh, of which also was very much discussed in the media, in conferences, in law journals, social media. I'm sure you're all familiar with the details of the case, but I would like to talk about this case anyway. Not only because it's of its high public interest, but also because the club not only failed to submit evidence for its allegation that CAS is not a duly constituted constituted arbitration body, but also because in the same complaint um, it made mistakes number four and five as well, and I like efficiency. The case outlined in a few sentences. The Belgium club, I know you all know it, but I still would like to repeated, the Belgian club RFC Serain concluded several agreements by means of which it transferred the economic rights of some of its players to an investment company. The FIFA disciplinary committee imposed a registration ban for four registration periods and the fine of 150,000 Swiss francs against the club for having directly and intentionally breached the FIFA regulations on the status and transfer of players, in particular Article 18Bs that forbids third-party influence, we heard a lot about it, and Article 18 Ter that forbids third-party ownership of players' economic rights. The Belgium club lodged an appeal at CAS against this decision. CAS confirmed FIFA's de decision, except it reduced the transfer ban from four to three registration periods. Following that, the Belgium club lodged a complaint before the Swiss Federal Court, mainly alleging that CAS could not be regarded as a genuine ar arbitration body, in short, because it was not financially independent from FIFA and because it was not independent because of the award scrutiny system by CAS and because of the apparent constant refusal of CAS to suspend the proceedings until the European courts decide on the legality on the TPO prohibition. In this respect, Federal Judge uh, Federal Judge Keyes took note of the fact that CAS already had been that CAS already has been confirmed by the Swiss Federal Court as an independent institution in the La Zutina case in 2003, and that the club's arguments and evidence were not sufficient to change such decision. Mrs. Kiss recalled that it is, it's not the duty of the Swiss Federal Court to reform CAS, nor to recast its regulations, its governing regulations, but it, it, it's it, her only duty to examine whether CAS reaches the independency level required to be comparable to a state court, which it certainly does. Next mistake, or that leads us to a golden rule, is immediacy. The Belgian club raised the grievance that its right to be heard had been violated because the CAS panel president, Mr. Bernard Foucher, prevented them from explaining that the TPO prohibition had in fact been adopted by, an ex ex by FIFA executive committee, of which at least half of the members were at that point being prosecuted in the USA person to an anti-mafia law. Judge Kiss explained that the arbitrators, yes, they do have a minimal duty to examine and address the relevant issues and that it 
this obligation is breached when inadvertently or due to a misunderstanding, the arbitrators fail to take into consideration allegations, arguments, or evidence presented by one of the parties and important for the award. Now the golden rule. In order to be able to invoke this grievance of the violation of the right to be heard, established in Article 190, paragraph 2, literal D of the Swiss private, Federal Private International Law, this violation must be raised immediately in the arbitration proceedings. Otherwise, it will be considered time barred. In the case at hand, the Belgium Club was interrupted by President Fuscher in the middle of the hearing while they presented their mafia stories like because the club had, uh, the, the club was interrupted because it had already shared their moral le lessons in their written submissions. But this did not prevent the club from continuing the proceedings until their conclusion and from even expressing their satisfaction as to the conduct of the proceedings at the end of the hearing. The club did not raise the grievance immediately and therefore it became time barred, a very common mistake. I personally find the next mistake a very interesting point in this case. RFC of Sarain claimed that the CAS award violated public policy. Federal Judge Keyes explained in her decision that a CAS award is incompatible with public policy if it disregards the essential and widely recognized values which, according to the prevailing view in Switzerland, should constitute the basis of any legal order. An award is contrary to substantive public policy when it is in breach of fundamental principles of substanti substantive law to, to, to such an extent that it can no longer be reconciled with a decisive legal order and value system. These principles include in particular contractual fidelity, respect for the rules of good faith, prohibition of abuse of law, prohibition of discriminatory or confiscatory measures, and protection of persons lacking civil capacity. RFC Serain claimed that the TPO ban, we heard it already, would prevent, prevent them from undertaking any activity with any third party, which would constitute a breach of public policy as Article 27, Paragraph 2 of the Swiss Civil Code prohibits excessive contractual restrictions on the economic freedom of the parties. The FIFA regulations would hinder the freedom of football clubs throughout the world to make certain types of investment. Now the golden rule again, a violation of Article 27, Paragraph 2 of the Swiss Civil Code is not automatically against um, a substantive public policy as required by the grievance established in the federal private international law that can be risen in international arbitration. There, are, there also needs to be a clear and severe violation of these fundamental rights. This means that a contractual restriction of economic freedom is considered excessive only if a party is placed at the mercy of its contractual counterparty's arbitrariness, if it suppresses, for example, the club's economic freedom, or if it restricts it in such a way that the basis of its economic existence is jeopardized. These conditions are not fulfilled in the present case because by prohibiting TPOs, FIFA is restricting the economic freedom of the clubs, but it is not suppressing it. Clubs remain free to pursue investments as long as they do not secure them by assessing the economic rights of players to third-party investors. 
For those reasons, Mrs. Kiss rejected the complaint. The next mistake sport lawyers make is to forget mandatory state competence with, within all the arbitration comfort zone. We sports lawyer, we tend, we are feeling comfortable with the FIFA cast, we know these bodies. So we are moving in a comfort zone, but we should not forget about the state competence. The example I wish to share with you concerns the claim for outstanding commission of the Argentinian football agent Pablo Gustavo Consentino against the football player Ezequiel Matias Cloto, who has a dual Argentinian and Italian citizenship. In September 2011, the parties had signed an exclusive representation agreement for a period of two years. In the event of a successful mediation, the agreement provided for a 10% compensation of the player's earned income in favor of the agent Consentino. In the agreement, the party signed a jurisdiction clause, a, a very short and clear one. I will read it in Spanish since we have English interpretation service. Para la tramitación y dilucidación de cualquier conflicto que pudiere suscitarse con motivo de la celebración, interpretación, ejecución y extinción de ese contrato y sin perjuicio que podrán ocurrir por ante las instancias federativas nacionales e internacionales que correspondan, entre paréntesis, órgano de resolución de litigios, AFA y Comisión del Estatuto del Jugador FIFA en el orden internacional, con fundamento en la garantía constitucional del juez natural, entre paréntesis, artículo 18, Constitución Nacional, las partes se someten a la jurisdicción y decisión de los tribunales ordinarios en lo comercial de la capital federal, República Argentina. Very short and clear. Or, I will read it translated into English because this clause is very important for the case. Any conflict that may arise in connection with the celebration, interpretation, execution, and extinction of the present contract and without prejudice that can occur before the corresponding national or international federative institutions, in brackets, dispute resolution organs of AFA and FIFA player status committee at international level, based on the constitutional guarantee of the natural judge, in brackets, Article 18 of the National Constitution, the parties submit themselves to the jurisdiction and decision of the federal commercial courts in Argentina. What was the case here? While the player being under representation agreement with the agent, his exi existing club rejected an offer made by a big Italian club. Almost one year later, the player terminated the agreement he had signed with the agent and signed with the Italian club, the one that had presented an offer to his former club, which the letter had rejected, for a duration of four and a half years and a salary totaling five and a half million euros. The agent lodged a claim at FIFA requesting a commission of 10% over the aforementioned salary FIFA analyzed the case and took note that approximately four months prior to lodging the claim, the agent had sent a letter to AFA and returned his license as a player's agent with immediate effect. Consequently, FIFA concluded that as he did not hold a license on the date when he lodged his claim, the agent had lost his standing to sue based on Article 6 of the 2012 FIFA procedural rules, and thus declared the claim as inadmissible. Following that, the agent lodged an appeal before CAS, and CAS kicked the players no in the nose. 
I mean, CAS accepted the appeal in the amount of half a million euro in favor of the agent for the following reasons. Because FIFA, based on Article 30 of the 2008 Players' Agents Re Re Regulations, <clears throat> was competent for disputes between an agent reg registered at AFA and an Italian player. And this within six months after the agent's activity ele had elapsed, meaning that the agent was allowed to lodge a complaint until November 2013, and he did so in September 2013, so two months before. Based on this competence and having considered that the parties had concluded a valid and binding representation contract which had to be honored, CAS overturned FIFA's decision and accepted the agent's appeal. As a, as a re reaction to this, the player took the case to the Swiss Federal Court. How many of you think that Mrs. Kiss kicked the agent's nose then? And how many of you think that the player kept the injured nose? Great, I see you are not asleep yet. I had the honor to represent the agent in, in this last uh, instant journey before the Swiss Federal Court. Of course, I refer to this uh, arbitration clause that the parties had signed at and that clearly mentioned FIFA's competence among all other op options. And I agree with Cass that the agent's claim was on time and well-founded. The player's lawyer raised the grievance of Article 190, Paragraph 2, Literal B of the Swiss Federal Private International Law, according to which an arbitral award can be challenged before the Swiss Federal Court if the arbitration body erroneously held that it had or did not have jurisdiction and claimed that CAS had erroneously held that FIFA and consequently itself had jurisdiction to rule on the case. So let's hear Mrs. Key's decision. She recalled that an arbitration clause must be understood as an agreement in which two or more determined or determinable parties agree and bind themselves to submit one or several existing or future disputes to an arbitration tribunal to the, exclu to the exclusion of the original jurisdiction of the state to a directly or uh, pursuant to a directly or indirectly determined legal order. It is decisive that the will of the parties should be expressed to leave the decision of some specific disputes to an arbitration body and not to a state court. The interpretation of an arbitration clause follows the generally applicable principles of interpretation of private declarations of will. It is therefore decisive to find the respective actual will of the parties. If the actual will of the parties cannot be ascertained, the arbitration clause is to be interpreted according to the principle of trust. That means the presumed will of the parties is to be determined as that which could and should have been understood by the respective declarants in good faith under the circumstances. Now, this is important to know. According to the established jurisprudence, a wafer to state court cannot be accepted lightly, which is why, in case of doubt, the judge must favor a restrictive interpretation. Analyzing the present arbitration clause, Federal Judge Kiss found that, firstly, the parties had submitted themselves expressly to the jurisdiction of the commercial courts in Argentina's capital. Las partes se someten a la jurisdicción y decisión de los tri tribunales ordinarios en lo comercial de la capital federal, República Argentina. This with a reference to the conditional rights to a judge. She then analyzed the part in which the part in the arbitration clause that referred to the two associations 
AFO and FIFA, and concluded that the exact meaning of the reference was not clear from the wording of the circumstances surrounding the conclusion of the contract. Well, for CASA and myself, it was clear that with the terms dispute res resolution organs AFA and FIFA player status committee in a jurisdiction clause, the parties meant to submit their disputes to their judiciary bodies and nothing else. But it was not so for federal judge Keys, and remember, she has the final, final say. In addition, furthermore, she emphasized that in addition, pursuant to the principle of trust, there is a clear ranking missing between the present, in the present clause between the competence of the organs of the associations AFA and FIFA and the jurisdiction of the state commercial courts. And that there she's certainly right. There must be a clear, clear ranking which one applies first and which second. For all these reasons, Mrs. Kiss concluded that the jurisdiction clause lacked certainty with regard to dispute resolution by arbitration and did not show in good faith a mutual intention of the parties to exclude disputes from the state jurisdiction. What are the consequences of Mrs. Key's conclusions? The CASA word was annulled because they wrongly accepted jurisdiction to decide the dispute. Therefore, the agent will have to take this case to commercial courts in Argentina. What are the golden rules taken from this case? Less is more. A potpourri of several jurisdiction options without ranking can lead to confusion. To be applicable, an arbitration clause must be clearly drafted. It is not enough to mention the word FIFA or CAS. You have to be cons uh, very specified. And maybe one personal additional suggestion. If you don't know the client, you better ask for an up upfront payment of your legal fees. <clears throat> Let's go to the last but not less important mistake of my top seven golden rules. Don't raise the grievance of Article 192, literal E, of the Swiss Federal Private International Law, claiming an excessive formalism that is incompatible with the Swiss public policy when you have forgot, forgotten to dispatch your, mails, your main submission to CAS by mail. It might seem a case of minor importance to you, but since I found four cases in the last two years in which Mrs. Kiss had to issue the same decision regarding football matters, I consider this case worthy of being ranked seven on the Kiss list. I was involved in one of those cases, so I will use this case to explain this matter to you. It is the case about the French coach Denis Lavagne. Mr. Lavagne is the son of former coach Léon Lavagne, so he learned the profession from his father, assisting him in several clubs in France, Le Havre, Béziers, Al, Nîmes, Valence. In general, Mr. Lavagne and his work are very much appreciated. So it was a totally new experience for him when one of his employers unilaterally terminated his employment contract after two and a half months only. It was the first time he had to seek legal advice and I had the good fortune to help him. We took the case to FIFA and the single judge considered that the club had no just cause to terminate his employment contract, forcing the club to pay my client outstanding salaries and compensation. The grounds of the decision were notified to the parties on 7 February 2018, which means, as you all know, an appeal had to be lodged within 21 days as of that date. On the very last day, the club presented its statement of appeal to CAS via fax, via email, 
but not by mail on the following day. After some email exchange, Cass informed the club that the court would not open proceedings in accordance with Rule 31 of the Cass Code, which establishes that any written submission, including the statement of appeal, must be filed by courier delivery to Cass, and that a submission of those doc documents per fax and email is only possible when the documents are also filed by courier within the first subsequent business day of the relevant time limit. The club did not accept this cast decision and therefore Mrs. Kiss and her colleagues had to work again. The club raised the grievance of Article 190, literal D, of the Federal Private International Law, that is the violation of its right to be heard. In particular, the club explained that CAS prevented it from explaining itself and from asking for restoration of the time limit before CAS informed it on its decision not to open proceedings, which violated the club's right to be heard. Ms. Kiss explained that important. In the field of international arbitration, the right to be heard in adversarial proceedings is subject to significant, significant restrictions. The right to be heard relates essentially to the establishment of the facts. That means, in principle, the, bar the parties do not, have, do not have to express their views on the legal assessment of the facts or, more generally, on the legal arguments to be adopted. Indeed, it is a question of fact to, de to determine when the original statement of appeal was filed by mail or why it was not filed earlier. For the rest, whether the requirements of form and time limit have been met and whether to proceed with the appeal as well as whether to extend the, ti the, the time limit, those are questions of law. In the case at hand, the date when the original statement of appeal was filed at CAS was evident, and the club explained to CAS that the non-filing of its submission via mail on time had occurred due to an unfortunate mistake by the lawyer's secretariat. Therefore, the federal judge considered the club's right to be heard as fully granted. The club further raised the grievance of Article 190, Paragraph 2, Literal E, of the Swiss Federal Private International Law, that is the violation of the Swiss public policy due to excessive formalism, claiming that CAS had become excess excessively formal by refusing to enter into proceedings of appeal, of its appeal, which would be incompatible with public order. The federal judge explained that according to established jurisprudence, excessive formalism occurs when procedural rules are designed or applied with rigor that is not justified by any interest worth worthy of protection to the point that the procedure becomes an end in itself and prevents or complicates the application of the law in an unsustainable way. Furthermore, Federal Judge Kiss made emphasis on the fact that procedural, procedural forms are necessary for the implementation of legal remedies to ensure that the procedure is, not conduct, is conducted in accordance with the principle of equal treatment and security of the law. Judge Kiss further pointed out that on the occasion of the two last revisions of the Rule 31 of the CAS Code, CAS had not removed the requirement to file a statement of appeal by mail within a strict time limit, and therefore it, it had taken into account the constraints related to post office and carrier schedules. This obviously in order to secure the aforementioned legal principles. She therefore rejected the club's complaint. What are the golden rules here? Don't blame your secretariat for late filing. And legal certainty and equal treatment 
of the parties require and justify strict requirements as to how a submission must be presented to CAS. Okay, these were the promised seven golden rules of my KISS list. If you follow them, you will win your cases before the Swiss Federal Court. And as I also promised you, I show you now the QR code that leads you to my written notes. I would like you to thank you for your attention and say goodbye. Thank you, Melanie. Any question? Alguna pregunta para Melanie en esta última ponencia? Vamos por aquí. Thank you. My name is uh, André, and uh, I'm sorry I'm not Swiss, I'm Belgian. And I would like to ask a question. As you m mentioned, um, an arbitration clause must be clearly stated. But generally, the jurisdiction of CAS is derived or is based on the freedom of association. When one adheres to an association, you accept all the rules of it. Yes? So, in fact, the, the fundamental basis of the jurisdiction of CAS, as accepted by the Tribunal Federal, is the freedom of association. Only now in the Mutu Pakistan case, the European Court of Human Rights said that professional athletes who adhere or who want to uh, exercise their profession, they are not free, they must submit. So the arbitration is a forced arbitration. So does that not um, put the whole system of the freedom of association in question? Well, personally, I don't think so, because as mentioned, it's not uh, suppressed, it's just restricted, and if you are a member of an association, you have to follow the rules. This is my personal opinion. And uh, as the Swiss Federal Court uh, is deciding within its competence and is within Switzerland in, in this uh, jurisdiction, it has been uh, confirmed as, as uh, not an, an imposed uh, arbitration body. Yes, but they did not go into the question of the forced arbitration regarding the freedom association, which is the basis of the jurisdiction of CAS. In the case of the Serain Club, they could have gone to maybe the other way. Why did they even apply to CAS if they don't consider CAS an arbitration tribunal? Yes, but now they contest CAS before the Belgian courts and the Court of Appeal has given right to Serain saying that the arbitration in that uh, general um, implicit uh, arbitration is, unlawf is uh, unlawful according to Belgian law. Well, but I was uh, talking about the Swiss Federal Court and not the, not the Belgian courts or, or the European Thank courts. You. Vamos con una pregunta más al fondo. Hola, Melanie. Eh, soy José Josami de Argentina. Eh, quería hacerte dos preguntas. Levantamos la mano para que te pueda sí, identificar. Acá. Gracias. Estoy. Eh, la primera es que ya un tema que lo, lo, lo pregunté el primer día ayer sobre el tema Guerrero. Si te parece que el fallo del Tribunal Suizo fue, yo le llamaría un, un fallo jarbariano, un win to win. Y si entiendes que por ahí el TAS se pronuncia demasiado positivista y el Tribunal Federal Suizo corrige eso. Que el caso es positivo, pero el caso subió la suspensión a 14 meses. No entiendo la pregunta. No, no, si es demasiado legalista el TAS, es la segunda, y por ahí el tribunal suizo suele corregir este legalismo en exceso que suele o puede tener el TAS a veces. Y la primera es si en el fallo Guerrero utilizó un sistema más o menos de, de mediación en donde benefició a los dos, dio una suspensión posterior, pero dio el beneficio de que por lo menos Guerrero puede estar en un mundial. Yo no creo porque el Tribunal Federal Suizo analizó 
si para, para aprobar las medidas provisionales el jugador cumplía los requerimientos y es, estos eran eh, obviamente existentes y por eso aprobaron las medidas provisionales que el jugador podía participar y, pero más adelante, como se ha visto, el Tribunal Federal Suizo rechazó eh, la apelación de, tanto del jugador como del, de la FIFA. Hacemos la última pregunta, aquí en la izquierda. Gracias. Melanie, aquí. Ay, no. <risa> no, una, una, está suave. La, 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 la prohibición de recurrir ante la justicia, or, ante los tribunales ordinarios establecidos en los estatutos de la FIFA, ¿ha sido demandada? ¿Conoces alguna, eh, alguna demanda, algún antecedente? Uno, dos… No, puedes repetir, no entendí la primera. La prohibición establecida en los estatutos de la FIFA de recurrir ante la justicia ordinaria. Sí, Dice, sí. está prohibido para quienes hacen parte de la familia del fútbol, entre comillas, ¿no? Está prohibido. ¿Eso ha sido demandado en alguna oportunidad ante el Tribunal eh, Ordinario Suizo, ante el Federativo Suizo? Eh, me recuerdo de una decisión reciente también que, que el Tribunal Federal sí eh, dejó claro que en el ámbito suizo, donde existe un, un, una relación pura eh, empleador y empleado suizo, eh, ahí un arbitraje es prohibido de concluir un, eh, una cláusula de arbitraje eh, excluyendo la opción de poder concluirlo un mes después de terminar la relación laboral y en este caso sí, luego como en el caso de Valque se pudo acordar una cláusula de arbitraje okay. y, y en ese, eh, pues ahí estamos hablando laboral Sí. Eh, se requiere agotar las dos instancias eh, el tribunal lo ha puesto como requisito agotar las dos instancias cuando se trata de una demanda contra una decisión eh, eh, o puede ir directamente uno a la justicia ordinaria. ¿Al Tribunal Federal Suizo? Sí, no. se pone como condición esas o, o puede ir uno, supongamos, yo considero que una sanción disciplinaria de un club X en Suiza eh, es uh, violatoria de mi derecho, de un derecho fundamental. Yo puedo ir de una a la, al, al juez ordinario o tengo que agotar esas instancias. Se eh, refiere si puedes ir al juez del distrito sí. cantonal. Sí. sí, claro que sí. O sea, no hay prohibición y al, y al no. atleta no lo van a sancionar. No, en mi opinión no. Así diga la FIFA que y tiene que resolverse. Se entonces. puede intentar a ver que si tienes la, los argumentos y todo, hay, claro que sí. Gracias, eh, Melanie. La última pregunta.